From the studios of KENW on the campus of Eastern New Mexico University, it's You Should Know, featuring the people and events of Eastern New Mexico and West Texas. Welcome to You Should Know. I'm Evelyn Ledbetter, I'm your host, and today's guest is Patricia Dominguez, and she's with USDA, and she is our State Rural Development Director. Patricia, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate everything you do for our state and, and all over, so give me a little bit of background about, about yourself, if you don't mind. Sure, so I'm um, from New Mexico. I grew up up north in a little town called Pinasco. Went to school there, um, graduated from high school, went uh, on to UNM, um, graduated from there. And I worked for the state for a bit, um, for Bernalillo County too. And, and I was lucky enough to get picked up by Senator Bingaman's office and later by Senator Heinrich's office. And now um, I was appointed in uh, 2021, October of 2021 by President Biden to be the state director for USDA Rural Development here in New Mexico. So very honored. Very oh. privileged. Well, that's that's quite a resume. Um, Thank you. My understanding is there's only four appointments for our state from the president. Is that there's correct? Very, very few, like a handful of appointments. Okay. And, yeah, rural development. And you snagged fun. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats. Completely, yeah, thank you so much. Completely honored to be in this position. And um, since I was from a rural community myself, this was uh, something I was very excited to, to, uh, to the position to be in. So I could help other rural communities. Um, you know, rural communities have a lot of promise, and sometimes all they need is just that personal attention and that investment, and that's what rural development is here to do. That's really cool. Um, I've actually been to Pinasco. Uh, I, I've skied at the little place ah, down the road, Sipapu, yes. mm -hmm. and we used to do the drive from Sipapu around to Pinasco and Santa Fe and mm -hmm. back. Beautiful area, but very pretty. So going from Pinasco to um, going to school at UNM, and in Albuquerque, that had to be huge. It was, you know, I won't deny it was the transition, you know, being <laughs> a small town, a small town girl and you get to Albuquerque and, you know, you to... <laughs> do, do you go, the, Dorothy, I'm not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this you is know, a was, whole different world. It was an absolute learning curve to, you know, become, um, you know, just more self, self uh, aware in some cases. You know, it was just a, you know, it's a, such a large community and, you know, back home, we all knew each other. You right. know, um, so. and their aunts and uncles and cousins <clears throat> exactly. and their ever all your neighbors, people and everybody yes. else. So, so yeah, well, suddenly you had to be be a little bit, uh, you know, more aware. And, you know, you never really lose that like hometown, like caring, you know, feeling. But you did have to be a little a little more cautious. <laughs> but I agree when you're from a rural area, you still you can take us out of rural and put us in a city. Mm -hmm. But down deep, we still have those rural roots and yes. the things that that mm -hmm. people in bigger, larger places don't have access to without funding. Mm -hmm. And that's truly exactly. what USDA and rural development does for us, correct? Exactly. Like we make our investments in rural America and, you know, here in New Mexico, in rural New Mexico. And, you know, we're very happy to be that agency. And we're a funder, essentially. So when folks see us coming, I think they're very excited because it oh, means yeah. we've made an investment in their community. Well, I literally live 10 miles out of town. I just got pavement this last year, oh, but I have fiber optic to my house. Yes. So recently, in fact, we uh, announced uh, Reconnect, which is a, a broadband program in uh, several um, communities here in, in southern New Mexico. So Plateau Telecom um, here in Portales. Right. Um, they were funded through President Biden's Infrastructure Investment Act, also known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill. And um, so... They got, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they, um, you know, they got some funding. We also f uh, funded ENMR um, te Telephone Cooperative or Plateau Tel. Right, I'm familiar. <laughs> right. Yes. Yep. And well, actually, so, that's where my fiber plateau and they were partnered in with Yucca Telecom. Mm. And that's how that fiber came to my house was through that. So thank you. Yes, yes, <laughs> you. you're welcome. <laughs> Happy to hear actually to Yay. meet somebody who is, you know, a, basically a, a recipient, you know, a recipient of, those benefits. of the investment. So 2.6 million to expand, you know, high speed uh, Internet access. And um, so they cover like quite a few counties. And actually, this is their um, second award. So they've received really in total 14.7 million. So 
you know, um, I know sometimes folks wonder, like, you know, there's not that many people out there. Like, why should we make these investments? This is really the, I would say, the investment that happened, you know, years back when we finally electrified, you know, the nation. Well, you know, internet access is is really needed for pretty much accessing anything it is. these days. It is. So no matter where you live, you know, whatever zip code you're in, you deserve the same level of, of access. And that's what we're here to do. Uh, so Penasco Valley um, Telephone Cooperative also got $13.9 million, again, wow. to expand uh, high-speed internet access. And um, again, this is a second investment to them. So they've received roughly about $29 million. And Western New Mexico Telephone Company is receiving $24 million. And they're out of where? Where is that Western <clears throat> New Mexico? So I believe they're in the kind of Grant County. Okay. Yeah, Grant County area. And, uh, you know, same thing. They'll be providing that that same type of service to folks out in, you know, very rural or very rural communities. But again, you know, they deserve the same well, level the, of the, access. the basics of life anymore. Mm -hmm. If you sign up for Social Security, exactly. they you have to do to. that online. Do it online. Um, you yes. can do telehealth, which we don't. Mm -hmm. We need in rural communities. We don't have caregivers, so you can do telehealth, but you need internet. You need it, yeah. And then, of course, our our classes mm -hmm. have changed. Not only high school may be online, but many of our our pro our classes here through ENMU are online. I believe all of our classes, but just a handful during the summer, are online. online. Which I think gives you a greater reach. You know, this particular, um, you know, program, I think, is probably very well respected. And, you know, there's probably folks who would like to come and, you know, exactly. You know, you have a bigger, a bigger reach out into, you know, other rural communities as well. So, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe folks, you know, don't want to, don't want to move or, you know, can't move, you know, for a variety of reasons. But now they can, you know, still participate because we have, you know, internet access and not just for business reasons but actually through for me i'm a huge proponent family comes first mm. um you have grandparents or aunts and uncles that don't live in the same town as, as grandbabies mm -hmm. and, but they can facetime or they can zoom yes. and they get to know their families exactly and so that quality of life is huge mm -hmm. huge and how about when we went through um, a pandemic several years right. ago you had elderly relatives in a nursing home, and the only thing you could do was virtual, right, connection, virtual connection with your family and your loved ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's it's a, it is an option that you know I don't think we would have thought of, you know, back how important back, it really was back when how before important all of it the crazy world stopped turning. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, but once you know you became used to it, you realized how um, like mm, people are very inventive. You know, what, what is that? A necessity is the mother of invention. It is. Well, like our universities, you, you came to class years in mm -hmm. my world. You yes, came to the university person. and you enrolled, you registered, mm -hmm. signed up for your classes. All that's online now. All of it. Yes. I remember waiting in that um, uh, that long line for registration. It would go out. For, yes. For miles. Around the building. <laughs> in 105 yeah. degree weather. <laughs> yes. And yeah, now, you know, from the... Ease of your desk, wherever, or even these days, your telephone. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, telephones have become um, essentially a mini supercomputer. It's a computer in, in your, your hand. hand. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and your classes and things, you know, literally when people were having to drive to parking lots oh, yeah. to have and access bust, to school. The bus into the, yeah, to the main campus. Is exactly. that not crazy? I mean, you guys were, rural <laughs> development was mm -hmm. what you had put in place prior to that made a huge difference and the quality of lives for people for lots of years mm -hmm. and will continue to become more and more. Yes, and that's what we're hoping for. <laughs> and I'm sure you're thrilled when you can go home yes. to your little town and say, exactly. guess what, I'm, I'm here mm -hmm. helping you guys. So yeah, so our electric co-op in, in Taos County is Kit Carson Electric mm -hmm. Co-op. They've gotten into the broadband world. Similarly, they've also re received some reconnect um, funds as well as some other federal funds. and. My internet service in, so Chamisal is a little community I'm from, it's just outside of Penasco. Um, fabulous. Same, you know, level. You have, you as, have better things than, <laughs> than people sometimes in, 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 in you and, know, in And so this will go way, way back. Um, I worked for a telecom company and then I also served on the electric co-op board. Oh. But my understanding was how this all started with USDA and RUS was 
it was uh, FDR, and he was visiting somewhere, a rural area, no electricity. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginnings of so it's so the REA or Rural Electrification yeah. Administration. Right. The Rural Utility Service is mm -hmm. uh, housed under uh, rural development. Okay. And uh, so they're uh, the regional, they're, they're regionalized. So we share our um, uh, representative with um, Arizona and we have the one person who oversees both. And so he's, he's very busy, Billy, Billy Kintner. And uh, he's, uh, yeah, you know, here, there and everywhere doing this kind of work and so we're very thankful for him and for everything that he does and yeah you know these investments into rural communities will help them you the, know the quality of life that this has brought to people is amazing yes so besides broadband <clears throat> so you do we've great uh, we have a lot of programs so we have a housing single family housing we have a community facilities program and our water and wastewater program, and they're housed under, they're housed together. So community facilities, uh, libraries, um, okay. senior centers. I was going to ask, I didn't centers, understand that term. Um, fire, uh, fire stations, police stations. So we can fund the infrastructure, but we can also fund equipment. So, um, you know, if you uh, are, you know, if you're, your community is in need of a fire truck, say, you know, we can help with, with that. Then uh, we, in our water and wastewater program, it does target very rural communities. There's a population uh, limit there for of, of 5,000. Those projects can be very expensive. And there's and no way a community of 5,000 could, could ever exactly. come up with the money to put that infrastructure in place. Right, and so it's a loan grant combination, and it's, it's uh, you know, they kind of break it out depending on the medium household income of the area, and also, uh, again, like the population that really do target those communities and uh, help with drinking water. You know, everybody deserves safe and clean drinking water. Well, there's been a big program in Berlin, correct? Yes, so that, recently that um, we funded um, a drinking water program in Berlin. So arsenic is actually naturally occurring in mm -hmm. New Mexico due to our geology. And sometimes, you know, when you drill a well, <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna get. So you drill the well, you hit water, and you're like, yay, and then you <laughs> test it. And so, you know, and, this and this little term parts per million. Yeah. As long as you dilute it, it's not so scary. But but in some cases, like you may drill a second well. One of the options is to um, basically like you know blend, and so you can you know bring the as you mentioned the parts per million down. In some cases, both wells have the problem, and so you at this point you need a filtration system. And so that's what we did um, with us uh, with the town of Belen. We uh, provided $3.6 million to install a water filtration system that will remove arsenic from the water. And I believe it will go, um, I think it might be online right now. And then um, we're actually going to drill another well. I think, you know, engineers come in and geologists come in and uh, hydrogeologists and figure out where you might, might have, be able to drill luck. and have some better luck. So they're, uh, we're obligating uh, roughly two million to drill the new uh, water well for, for Belen, and I believe that will happen at the end of the year. Do you know, I don't know, I'm not familiar with the population of Belen, but it's it's south of Albuquerque. It's south of Albuquerque, so. But a pretty small, but pretty, yeah, pretty small community. Pretty small community, so. Sure. Yeah, so, and again, you know, these, uh, some of these projects would be out of, you know, out of reach if we didn't have the, you know, uh, there there is always some loan associated with it, but. You know, it's a good chunk of it is grant as well. And again, I don't know the exact numbers. You know, it's just based on um, the median household income. And uh, another thing we can do in some cases um, in areas that are unincorporated, you kind of just fall within the bigger boundary of a county mm -hmm. if you're not a census designated um, area, which is a lot of, you know, small towns in New Mexico. But mm -hmm. you're going to be serving a particular community. So we can do what's called an income survey and determine that that area may be actually lower in income than say the rest of the county and we'll base it off of those numbers. So then they can qualify so they can for qualify things at other places. For, well, for higher for grants, a okay. higher grant percentage and a lower loan percentage because you know, otherwise, again, you, know, you likely wouldn't be able to, to pay it back. You know, as technology moves um, you know, forward, it's a little pricey. You know, and also just the you know, infrastructure piece again little pricey and probably a little more so in rural communities where things have to be shipped, you know, shipped in. So, you know, we're well aware of that. And, you know, again, 
do our best. So uh, let me. So we also have our our <laughs> business uh, our business uh, programs, which um, probably uh, I would say a little uh, somewhat ag related. So I think when people see, think USDA, they think all agriculture, and actually <laughs> rural development is very much you know. It uh, covers it many, 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 many parts. Many parts. So we do have our value-added producer grant, which I think is probably more focused towards clearly ag. So say you're a um, you know a producer who's uh, you know maybe tomatoes and onions. Maybe you want to make salsa. You know we'll help you adding you know basically the value-added producer piece. So we'll help you add value to that product. And uh, so you know that that's that's a very popular program here in New Mexico. We've helped. Um, Helps a lot so, of folks so with that. We all love our, well, most of us <laughs> for New Mexico love our green chili. Is that something that this program helped with? It can, depending on, uh, you know, the, the, what the, the product is. Like um, we, um, and, and it, the, the, the name escapes me right now, but I know that there's some folks who have um, like the ch chile de enos, right? Mm -hmm. you know, you've, that's the value added portion of the, you know, the green chili and or potentially like, you know, like you say salsas, you know, okay. other, other things along those lines. So folks come in, they come, you know, give us their, their idea. And then our um, business um, team helps them work through that process. And you're building an industry and, and it may be a niche industry, but you're building that and creating jobs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the, the quality and value of someone's life. Mm -hmm. improves greatly yeah so like these very small investments in communities have the ripple effect you know it might it might be adding you know five to ten jobs and it may not seem like a huge number but it actually really for those is five to ten for that's those five everything. to ten and then you know there's shop locally right. right so then you know the local grocery store or you know some other you know or it may offer them the opportunity to stay in the community which is another thing. A retention you know, of, of our young people within of, New Mexico. Exactly. So, you know, trying to stop that brain drain, if you will. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes folks come to us with, with some really good ideas. So like in uh, Vado, New Mexico, which mm -hmm. is uh, kind of close to Las Cruces. Right. Um, what what they're doing there is, uh, and, and we, we've assisted, is freeze drying fruit and vegetables. And uh, it increases the shelf life. And uh, they've... Um, the other thing is so, you know, I think folks really like when you go to the grocery store, everything's very pretty. You know, you're getting the you, it's all polished <laughs> it's and polished shiny up. and <laughs> it's photoshopped like when you're on camera, you wish you were photoshopped. <laughs> exactly. So in this case, um, because they're freeze drying it, it can be the ugly fruits and the ugly vegetables that actually still have the same nutritional value. They just don't look appealing to the mm -hmm. eye. So, you know, um, say you've got hail damage, you know, which just happens. You just right. never know what's going to happen. You've got you know, some bird damage. You've got something. Sunburn. So, you know, they're able to um, freeze dry that and they do target um, local uh, lo local growers and they'll still pay, you know, basically the market rate, even if it is damaged because the freeze drying process covers and it the all quality up, and value and the quality that food value has not, not and changed. the nutritional value has not changed. Yes, so it's just not packaged quite it's as. It's just pretty. not. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you know, so those are our, our major programs, and I would encourage folks if they have an idea to come see us, you know, because we do have some other programs that are, um, you know, out of the national office. These are are are, are you know staple state programs, but rural development encompasses you know a, a whole <laughs> a whole bunch of other. Um, ideas and just you know come by if you have something and if if it's not us we'll try to send you to you know the agency that will be most likely. To so help do you. you have a number or a website that people can can visit or let's say I just go to um, uh, a search engine what would I even look under to find rural development? So we uh, I, I would put in USDA a rural development New Mexico. Okay, but we do have a website um, www.rd <laughs> dot usda dot gov backslash okay. nm okay and, and and i think the plan is we'll put that in the credits at the oh, end of the wonderful. show so if you didn't catch that quite today okay. they can come as a viewer you can come back and, and find that information great and, and a um, phone number possibly. Uh, so we our, our albuquerque office which is our uh, state office the main office 505-761-4950 we have five offices in New Mexico um, and all located in rural communities for, okay. for the most part. So Albuquerque, which it's not rural, but it's the state it, office. It's a very big office. <laughs> yeah. So the Aztec office, our Las Cruces office, 
an office in Las Vegas and an office in Roswell. Okay. And, uh, you know, basically they cover, you know, they're located strategically to kind of quadrant the state. And, okay. you know, we try to help folks out in basically all, you know, all those areas. All those areas. So the kind of urban areas are really kind of the center. Well, and, had, we know. have three big cities, mm -hmm. Las Cruces, Albuquerque, and Santa Fe. And the rest of us are typically rural New Mexico. Right. Exactly. And so you guys come in and help all of us. And there's a lot of things I've learned um, today. Um, I was somewhat familiar with USDA, but doing some research, getting ready for the program, sure. didn't realize how much. Yeah. So. Uh, another program we have is uh, it's called the Rural Energy for America program, and it assists small businesses if they are interested in potentially going to a renewable energy source. Okay. Typically, folks do choose solar. Okay. We have a lot of, of uh, you know, uh, sun sun energy here in New Mexico, mm -hmm. but you know uh, wind is also part of that as well as geothermal, which we do have some some here in New Mexico. Okay. And uh, in the Inflation Reduction Act that just recently passed, it increased the um, the split to fifty percent. So essentially, you'd be paying for you know we would be taking on the cost of half of your um, you know your it, your project if you chose to you know. Well, Patricia, we're, we're kind of winding down, but go to the website. Yes. Go to the website, find this information. But I also understand you have something that, that I do. you would like to present. So, to. you know, um, we wanted to honor Mr. Ryan. I know he recently passed and he was just such a, you know, um, stalwart of the community and just a loved community member. And so we wanted to honor him today. I know, you know, mm -hmm. for this uh, community, you know, he did a lot of wonderful things he in did. terms of... Um, really in terms of everything, I would say, right? You have those folks in the community who are, you know, a little bit of the glue that holds so many things together. So I just wanted to oh, present this to you. you in honor of, of Mr. Ryan and just say, you know, we understand, well, you know, how much you loved him. Thank you. And, uh, you know, we we knew him as well and, you know, appreciated. Well, a lot of the things that did. are built here are through funding, through, yes. through you guys. So thank <laughs> you. He was a tremendous man and gracious and kind and just a, just wow. a game changer, changer yes. within New Mexico. So, Patricia, thank you so much. You're we will, welcome. We will, thank you. We will definitely just honor this forever. Um, he will live on through all of us. Yes, what through I say. all his good works. From students mm -hmm. in the past and colleagues and people he's worked with. And you can't find better. Yes. You can't find better than, than Mr. Ryan. So he touched our hearts in a very long, large way and always will. So thank you for all your information. There's so much more. We didn't get yes. to it all. Love to have you back anytime oh, to share with you. us. I, I love coming out. This so a... thank you for all the things you do for, for Bertalis and all the other counties and parts of New Mexico. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So to all of you guys out there, thank you for watching. We will see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>